supposed to say that, right? So, welcome. Uh, you probably just watched a, a short little clip of some of the first Jim McGuinn Band performance at Hotel Congress. That was about a week ago. It's currently July 31st, and I'm editing this all together and realized that I took a lot less footage than I kind of originally intended to. So I'm kind of splicing together. It's not going to be a long video, but I did want to kind of give an introduction to what's going on and hopefully the fact that this will be a thing in the future. This is going to be the first kind of gig vlog series, I guess. I don't know. It's not really going to be a series, but I thought it would be good to do. I have a lot of people ask me about uh, what I do when I gig and, and how I play and how I prepare. And so this is going to kind of be the first iteration of that. So I hope you enjoy. I'm going to kind of poke in and out of the video throughout to kind of explain what's going on and then I'll see you at the end. So enjoy the footage. Thank you to Jim and everybody else in the band for a great show and I hope everybody has a good time and gets to see some things from this video. The stage volume audio is actually not that bad. Not as bad as I was expecting. So without further ado, here's some more shots from our sound. So that's the sound check. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's not as flashy as everybody likes to think it is. Mostly you're just doing lots of sign language and just saying, hey, I need more of this in the monitor if you're having to work with a monitor engineer, which we are, which is fine. Uh, maybe in the future we'll do a, an isolated rig, but not right now, not right now. So now I'm gonna show you guys kind of what the, the transition is like from sound check to set. I've got a nice little clip here of the our opening song and it kind of fades from the sound check volume and then straight into the set volume. There's a slight change in tempo, but uh, you can kind of tell there's a few things that are a little different. Obviously, a couple of us changed attire, but other than that, uh, it's, it's a really cool shot to kind of see how this, how this works out and how the room sounds with people in it and then without people in it. So, enjoy. <laughs>
is what will eventually be the first guess at, I don't know, what could possibly be kind of a vlog series for doing some stuff in the future. Ah, I'm just walking down here, headed to Congress, being really bad at video and stuff. I was going to take a little bit of footage in the sound check, and then kind of got distracted, um, power, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But, working on it now, this is actually a lot harder than it seems to be. I, I see why they do the gimbal thing, isn't that right? Anyway, this first gig with the Jim McGuinn band, super excited about this one. Open it up, it's another band at Hotel Congress, nice Thursday night, it's going to be a good time. Had a family member ask, you know, how gigging was like and that kind of stuff. And, thought about it for a second and I said, you know what, I think I'll just do like a vlog thing. You can watch that instead of having me explain it to everybody. Maybe that's a little strange to say out loud, but it's always been one of those things that seems like it could be fun to try. I really gotta get this gimbal thing figured out. Man, my arms are hurt already. Anyway, headed down now. Worked all day at a band camp. Uh, left early, drove straight uh, to the house, finished loading up the set, drove over there about 4.30, unloaded about half an hour, 45, had something to drink, then managed to do a sound check pretty quickly, sounds pretty good, monitor makes this a little different than I was kind of expecting, um, got like a big sub from a monitor, so man, some of these frequencies are hot in my monitor mix, but that's okay. So yeah, then I decided to walk home, because I'm walking distance from the venue, which is starting to be a first in Tucson, which is pretty cool. Um, walking distance from the venue. And took a shower, got the hat, brand new hat, and headed back over there now. Probably have another drink. See the guys. If I make it in time, they could still be sound checking up there for the closing man. It would be pretty sweet. And, uh, yeah gonna be a good time. It's a 8 o'clock show time. They're backlining my drum set, which is also a first for me. Um, I backline stuff a lot more often, I think, than I have people backline my stuff. So, that's cool, but other drummer seems really rad. And we're gonna have a good time. And there's... Yeah, everybody loves walking under this grid. Anyway, time to catch some footage when I get there and then you get to see some stuff on the stage which will probably be not the best audio but we're trying some stuff out a little zoom camera in the corner sorry Rhett Shell, we're not doing that kind of stuff see you later get a few shots of just kind of quick panning backstage things and I, I kind of wanted to point those out because I feel like a lot of people might not understand what it is like to be on a stage ever even a small one it's not like I'm playing an arena or anything but there's a lot more equipment that comes out of cars and goes on that stage than I think you realize. I mean, I pack up my whole backseat of my SUV and then, you know, the guitarists have got a couple guitars, there's cables everywhere, got monitors and all kinds of stuff running through. And I just want to give everybody a quick view of what that looked like. So here's a couple things from sound check and kind of in between sound check and the set. Here it is upstage, checking some stuff out. 
looking amazing. Got a little bit of music going on in the background. But yeah, we are we are rocking and rolling up here, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, we did this with another great band, uh, Dirt Roads with Navajo Country. They closed the set out for us and also sounded fantastic. I mentioned earlier in the video before that they were backlining my kit because they were coming down. And I got to say, you, should, you guys should check them out. They sound really great. I love it when a drummer shows up. I don't really backline my stuff for other people as much. Uh, normally it's the other way around, but uh, this is one of the first time, not the first time, but first time in quite a while that I've had to backline my stuff. And it's always cool when the drummer shows up and you're like, hey, do you have a, did you bring a snare? Are you going to have to change mic placements out? Like what, you know, what do you need? Like, is he going to be upset and be like, why don't you have a third Tom? And he shows up with just a pair of the pink Vic Fro sticks and was like, no, I'm good. Didn't even... I don't even think he adjusted the throne height. He just kind of moved it back a little bit. And you know, when you sit back down in your kit after somebody sound checks and you're like, ah, oh, okay. Didn't have to move much. It's always a great feeling. So shout out to that drummer and shout out to Dirt Roads of Navajo Country and shout out to that, also, again, that drummer for just making my kit sound good. I got a couple clips from that. Uh, I'm just going to show kind of a couple quick 30 second shots of them because they really do sound fantastic. You should check them out. And it's really cool to hang out and listen to your gear in the room you know i don't get to do that as much and then you would realize so anyway here's some clips from dirt roads in navajo country And last but not least, just want to give a quick shout out and goodbye for everybody. Uh, this was a phenomenal gig. I had a great time. Shout out to the, the rest of the band, Jim and Billy and Andrea and Rich and Caesar. They all are great to play with. I mean, I can only give highest praise to those guys and gals. It's a lot of fun. You can catch us again at Hotel Congress at the Plaza this time, not at the club, on August 17th. I don't know the time off that. You can check my Instagram and everything for... When that gets officially announced, it'll probably be another evening spot somewhere between 7 and 9 p.m. Um, so really excited to be playing the plaza outside. Hopefully it's a little cooler by the time we do that, but it'll be a great time. And then catch us around. Uh, I'm going to put some social media tags up here on the screen uh, for Jim and myself. And then if you want to follow along with the band and everything, uh, I'll try and put as many of those that I can find up on the screen too because uh, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff to be tagging. But thank you guys so much for hanging out. If you have questions or whatever, you can always ask. And if you liked it, please let me know. Um, I'm not going to be the guy who's like, like and comment and subscribe. But you can like and comment and subscribe if you want. Or you can just uh, text me because most of the people that are watching this are probably have my phone number. If you like this and you want to see more, like please let me know. It takes a lot of work. It's not the hardest thing I do necessarily, but it does take time to just remember to bring extra equipment to these gigs and set it up and film it check audio levels, and then sit here and edit everything through. So hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, please enjoy the outro for one of my favorite songs that we play, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. And morning after, I have not unpacked my car. 
I am later than I want to be waking up, but I have to go teach a band camp in the morning. And, uh, yeah, that's what we're, we're going with. Gigging's rough, guys. Gigging's rough. But it was fun. Thanks for tuning in.